When I think of Asian staples, the first thing I think of is rice. But there's another humble starch with a long history. This exhibit at the Charles B. Wong Center at Stony Brook University celebrates the potato in all of its Asian glory. I took a tour of the show called Potasia with the exhibit's co-curators to see how the potato has affected and inspired Asian art throughout history. As soon as I heard that there was an exhibit all about potatoes, I had to come. Can you tell me more about it? You are at the Charles B. Wong Center. It's an Asian art and culture center. We do uh, offer a lot of variety of uh, Asian culture programs, including exhibitions. This is all about humble potato as related to Asian culture. It's called Potasia and Potatoism in the East. So we explore potato as a culture icon as related to Asian culture. Surprising enough, it has inspired many Asian artists and also it served as an artistic manifestation of social and political changes. Can you show me some of your favorite pieces? Sure. Here, potato is a primary subject of all entire socialist poster collection. Even though it shows really vibrant color and energetic people, it represents often poverty and sorrow and their shortages. But at the same time, it shows the future abundance. These posters really show how food teaches you about mm -hmm. history. When you look at these happy, colorful right. images, you don't realize mm -hmm. that this was made during the Great Leap Forward, right. which caused and a lot of famine. You see these posters hanging in Chinese restaurants now almost as kitsch, devoid of right. historical context. Right. Well, these are very ornamental. It is actual potato painted in gold. She's contrasting the beautiful peony flower with the decaying sprouting potato as uh, her manifestation of beautiful dream, yet a fragile reality. This is so intriguing. This is a ambiguous form of potato. Potato usually you know, kept in the dark to prevent growing of the sprout. And I think that she was kind of kept in the dark, you know, not to grow as an artist. This artwork is a matter for herself as an artist, and I think she really expressed well the duality of potato in here. What do you want people to take away from this exhibit? I'd like to have a more uh, flexible idea about Asia itself. Asia is not always old and historical. It is growing and changing. Potasia co-curator Jeffrey Allen Price isn't your typical potato fan. He's more like a fanatic, or what the Japanese call an otaku. Jeffrey has thousands of potato-related memorabilia, food items, and art from around the world. I first came to the potato as a vegetarian, and then I thought about it as a conceptual art project. And the more I researched about the potato, it just became this interesting symbol where I was finding instances in movies and in music, and it led me to understand that the potato was this worldwide cultural phenomenon, that all cultures use the potato. How many pieces of potato art do you have in this exhibition? This is a sampling of my collection. These are all Asian themed. There's a, a little over a hundred. What in about time. in your entire collection? The entire collection is well over 5,000 pieces. 5,000? Yes. Why don't I show you one of my favorite objects in the collection? This is a stereo viewer. This particular one is a potato stall in Japan. You see uh, almost a three-dimensional view of this. Amazing, from 1896? Uh -huh. So we do have real potato food. This shows how the potato is ubiquitous in snack foods. I love it, and so this Lay's potato chip from China has seaweed, whereas this one from Thailand has... Lime it's... and, uh, well, it's mikam grabus. So it's localized for, exactly. the, for the pellets. What's with this? Well, here we see that a potato can run electricity. So we have a sweet potato clock. We have simple electrodes, and it's running a, a very simple clock here. So you're a multidisciplinary artist. <laughs> That's right. And this is a film that I'm working on. This is how I say potato. Alu. Pomme de terre. Potato. 
So I'm getting as many different languages and accents and nicknames for the potato as I can. I'm also interviewing them about their own personal stories. And I'm trying to tell the story of the potato around the world through this film. Thanks to you both, I'm never going to look at a potato the same way again. 